bright and early, 6 a.m. We are back to attempt to fix the third gen today. Now, I don't have a part on hand to fix this truck today. However, I'm hoping that once I get the rear end taken apart on this driver's side and I can actually get the part off, I can easily identify it and match it up with the stuff that I'm looking for to make sure I order the right part just because I don't know if it's very specific to this year or if the 03 to 11 trucks have the same rear end or not, or 03 to 11, uh, 12 trucks, my bad, um, have the same rear axle completely and the same caliper mounting points and all that stuff. If they do, great. If not, um, I wanna know that so I don't order the wrong part. We're gonna get to tearing this apart and seeing what we can figure out. So good news and bad news. The good news is we got to the part that we needed to get to. The bad news is I don't have the right size wrench to get that off, so I'm gonna have to go buy one, but I got everything taken off. I got the rotor and hub assembly and all that stuff uh, pretty much off. You can see the bearing, the snap ring, the other parts and bolts. Everything on this looks pretty good as well for the most part. I'm actually kind of surprised. This really is not wore down horribly. It's just like the top edge was rubbed off because once that top bolt came off on the caliper, which if you're stopping it newer, the top bolt actually came out at some point. I've only had the truck for about two days when this happened. Top bolt happened to pop out up on top there. I don't know if it was already out when I bought the truck or after. It's regardless, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna fix it either way, but then it put all the pressure on the bottom portion that held the caliper in place. And as you can imagine, while braking, going and stopping, going and stopping, going in reverse, and then it catching it, you know, the brake itself, and then like pulling it and putting a bunch of strain on that uh, part right there, it just snapped it off and gave way. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal to replace. I'm pretty sure all we have to do is take off these last four nuts here, and then this whole portion should just pop off. I only see the four studs there, so that should just pop off, and we should be able to order in our new part and put it in and have that all fixed and ready to go. Okay, so hopefully we got most of the parts that we need. I got a new brake caliper, new brake pads, torque wrench, C-clamp, shop towels, and some other stuff. The 23 millimeter wrench that I bought does not work, but these rear nuts are not that tight. So for now, this is spinning them off just fine. They're really not torqued on that hard. I'll just need to get the proper wrench to put them back on. So it looks like we're headed back into town to find the wrench that we need. Hopefully I got the wrench. I went down to my little local hardware store that I've never been to before. So it, it's kind of nice meeting new people in a new town that I live by. And I've never been there and I've never looked through the hardware store down there. And I'm like, you know what? They're five minutes away instead of 15. I'm gonna try it out. I just happened to find them on Google a minute ago. I'm like, there's gotta be somewhere closer. So I'm gonna see if this works. I just wanna be able to get this part off. I will show you guys the part that I found that I think should work. Here's the part that I found. I mean, it appears to be the same part. Looks exactly the same. I mean, as far as I can tell, I don't see any real differences. For now, this is as far as we're gonna get. I did order the part. I had to order it, putting it down as a 2010 truck to find to buy that part, because every time I put in anything 03 to 06, 07, 08, it wouldn't bring up the part. It said it didn't exist and that it was discontinued and you can't buy it anymore. But then when you put in 09 to 12, this part comes up. And then when you read the fine print, which is kind of weird, when you read the fine print, it says for 5.7, 6. I thought it said 5.7, 6.4, 6.7 turbo diesel and 5.9 turbo diesel. In 09 to 12, they didn't even make a 5.9 turbo diesel. Okay, uh, so I ordered the part anyways. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at this point, that's my best shot. It should be here in about three days. So hopefully that works out great. And then we can get this all buttoned back up. You know, it is what it is. So I'm gonna put some paper towel in this hole just so that nothing gets up in there, no dirt or dust blows around. Just gonna cover this all up, cover up this 
portion of the axle here so we don't get a bunch of dust and dirt on this part that has to be nice and clean. And then I'm also going to cover up some of the parts down here, wrap that up in towel as well so that it doesn't get covered in any dirt or dust over the next few days in this barn. Same with all the nuts and the bearings and the bolts and stuff. I'm gonna wrap those all up in shop towel just to keep them from getting covered in dust so that when we get the part in in a few days, we're all good to go and ready to get this thing back on the road. Well, we just made a little road trip over to my parents' farm where we're gonna be checking on a food plot and some pictures. Now, we're gonna keep this segment of the video short and sweet because I know that not everybody is as interested in the outdoors and hunting as myself, but I do know that I have a lot of fans that are into this and they enjoy seeing in on it a little bit time to time. A little shot of the first gen for everybody that admires this truck. It is just such a clean truck, it really is. First, I'd like to show you the food plot back here I showed it on my Instagram so if you follow me on Instagram my Instagram is at loud and proud underscore diesel trucks if you follow me there you probably saw the video on my story if you keep up with my story however I haven't showed it on YouTube and YouTube is where I showed the initial video of the basically construction of this plot clearing it prepping it seeding it all that stuff so here's all this other area that we had prepped because I was going to plant this all but I just thought you know it's not gonna get a ton of sunlight and this location gets sunlight throughout the day it goes in kind of like sections like in the morning the back half gets sunlight for like three four hours and then midday the whole thing gets plot for like three four hours and then the later afternoon this back half gets sunlight most of the afternoon until about 7 p.m and then it kind of goes off the plot so it gets plenty of sunlight for purple top turnips which is what i planted back in here and as you can see the plot is growing very very nicely looks Really, really good. Super stoked with how it's growing and how it's turning out. Now, the question is, is it overseeded? And that's what we're gonna find out in uh, probably another two weeks, you'll get a good feel of whether or not the plot I planted way too much, or if it'll just kind of like selectively, some plants will grow, others will die, and still have a decent crop that'll end up blowing up here. But planting this stuff is kind of tricky because the seeds are so small, you can't see any. So even on the smallest setting, that's what I did on this. I did the smallest setting, and I kind of ran over it pretty quick to try and not overseed it because I didn't want to put too much seed because if you put too much, it just chokes it up and then you don't have any crop versus at least if you put on just the right amount or even sometimes too little technical seed, at least the seeds that you did plant are gonna blow up and have a good amount of tonnage on them. But if you overplant, it sounds like, oh, how can you have too many seeds? Well, if you have too many seeds, then the whole thing can just die. Or sometimes it'll grow, but it won't reach its full maturity and it'll tap out at about half growth or less because there's just too many plants. It's hard to tell if there's literally just way too many plants or the leaves are just so big that it kind of looks like they're all connected. I kind of think most of the plot should be fine, but there are definitely areas where it's overseeded. And you can see certain areas where you don't get as much sunlight. This area, for example, doesn't get a ton of sunlight. And also, you have to take into consideration the areas closer to some of these bigger, more mature trees, like these two right here, they're gonna pull more moisture versus the whole center of the plot. There's really not a lot of root structure pulling most of the moisture, but once you get towards the edges, you can kind of see where the plot's a little bit shorter in areas. And here's the back part of the plot. This is gonna be about my farthest shot from my stand. And as you can see, here's my stand. Probably about 35 yards to the far edge of the plot. And then it's about 40 yards to the farthest corner over there, but pretty much everything that comes through the plot or within a small distance on the back side of the plot, it'll pretty much be within bow range. Here's the first image. If you see, we have a flying deer. Can't see if there's antlers or not. Because of the height, the deer jumped out of the frame. And you can see the deer in the background there running across the field. Image number two, we've got those four doe up close here. And if you look really close in the far back corner, let me kind of zoom in. You can see three more deer right back there. So there's a total of seven in that picture that I can clearly identify. You got three bucks in this image right here. Actually, it looks like, if you look at the hump of his back right there, it looks kind of weird. It looks like a deer standing in the background right there. You can see it popping out right there. There's those four bucks. This one back here, he's, he's decent. He's a pretty nice one. And then here's a close-up of a couple bucks. Here's a decent two-year-old. Not a giant, but he's got a lot of potential. He's a five by five at two years old. There's another two decent ones right there. Another angle of them. There's another decent angle of that deer. And then you can see a fawn sneaking in to get a look at the mineral rock. Look how much bigger this deer is compared to that yearling fawn. A few nice ones right there. This is that one I think that I saw off in the distance that I said had a decent amount of mass. You can definitely tell how much bigger his body is compared to the other ones. He looks more matured. He has more of a round pot belly on him, even though he's arched down to lick the rock versus 
this deer on the right side there, it just looks like a tube. You know what I'm saying? It looks more like a thoroughbred horse. This is actually taken before the last one, so you can see that decent one walking in on there, and then there he is right there with his head down. There's another image, decent year and a half up at the rock, and there's the other three bucks in the background. Actually, take it back, there's another one in that far right corner, right back over there. He's a decent looking deer. Then this is my favorite image that we got. You can see there are five bucks in the one picture. There's one there, there, these two up close, and then that one a little bit farther away on the right, over right over there. Beautiful picture, 7.23 in the afternoon. Haven't been back here near as much as I normally am before deer season, but that's a good thing. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. We've got a really exciting thing going on for the resto gen, and I think you guys are gonna wanna see it. It's a DIY video. It's gonna be pretty good. If you want to enter to win our truck of the month, our 1997 OBS Ford Power Stroke, it's at the paint booth right now getting brand new paint. It was a rust-free truck, 97, 73 Power Stroke, low miles, beautiful inside and out, no rips, no tears in the seats or the dash, anything. It's super clean, super nice truck. Anyways, you get the option between 24-inch American Force wheels or 16 by 10s and some mud tires. It's really just whatever you prefer. Truck comes with five $5,000 cash and right now every $1 is one entry and every single order gets cash all random amounts. So if you want to enter, it's this simple. Hit the link in the description, lnpgear.com, where you can just type this in in your Google search bar, go to the website, and every $1 is one entry to win that truck you see on the site plus $5,000 cash. But the giveaway ends in about 13 days. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.